Hey everyone, Crisis here. With Fallen Order crushing Star Wars video game records, seeing the most copies sold, and with Cal Kestis' adventure continuing in Jedi Survivor, I figured it was fair to match up the protagonist of the current Disney canon game series against perhaps his most apt analog from Star Wars Legends. That being the collection of Star Wars expanded material from 1977 to around 2014, with the current canon being defined as most media from 2014 onward. Starkiller is, of course, from the, as well, uber-popular Force Unleashed series of games. They're both pretty much dual-saber-wielding young survivors of Order 66, each operating around their respective versions of the Dark Times. They both now have two games with a few novels, with Cal's more or less main adversaries being similarly Vader-trained Dark Assassins. And Cal's put in the work lately, performing feats pretty visually evocative of those many may remember fondly from the days of the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. While this matchup may seem one-sided to some, there is more to each character than meets the eye. What with each saber wielder boasting two video games and with Cal's continued growth and power, this video should hopefully also change the nature of Star Wars canon versus Legends debates as I think there are a fair few misconceptions therein. For starters, this isn't simply going to be like, well, Cal lost to Vader and Starkiller beat him, case closed. I think many people don't truly understand how vastly different the canon and Legends universes are. They are each two very distinct timelines, with even the points of convergence being informed by vastly different contexts and events surrounding them. The biggest and most famous example is probably Luke Skywalker. Love it or hate it, the last Jedi version of the character led a very different life compared to his Legends counterpart and has very different power scaling. It's honestly safer to just assume that's the case all across the board regarding anything from the nature of weapons, histories, and as this video should demonstrate, power levels. This might as well be a Marvel versus DC topic. They're just two completely distinct universe with their own series of feats and quantification, so just try to look at it that way and keep that in mind moving forward. Also, as more of a Legends connoisseur myself, I've got the Jedi Fallen Order Platinum Trophy alumni, Key Issues Garrick here, to break down Cal Kestis' abilities throughout the video, but we'll begin looking at Starkiller. The son of two Jedi escapees of Order 66, taken in at a young age as the secret apprentice of Darth Vader, only to then later be cloned after his sacrificial death, coming back this time even stronger than before. This rogue Jedi is renowned for his strength. He's kind of known as the, like, Broly of Star Wars, just a character that kind of embodies the uber chad concept of a power fantasy and takes the visual impressiveness of the Force to a level pretty much still unseen on screen to this day. As to find out just how powerful he is exactly, we could go through a rather long and likely exhaustive daisy chain, scaling Galen to this guy, who scales to this guy, who scales to this guy, and on and on, which would be fair to do for sure, and I certainly wouldn't shy away from it typically, but insofar as determining the victor of this matchup, and for the sake of brevity, Starkiller actually gives us enough to go off of just based on what he performs alone. In the Force Unleashed 2, the cloned apprentice was seen charging up the Salvation's cannon with his own force lightning, powering a blast which cleaves an entire Imperial I-Class Star Destroyer in half. Based on the official power output of similar craft, which would inform how durable the Star Destroyer's energy shields are, Starkiller empowered a blast boasting up to 43 teratons of energy or over 180 sextillion joules just from his force lightning alone. Keep in mind that this gun, again, was powered based on Starkiller's own force energy, so the feat it performed should pretty linearly scale back to Starkiller meaning his other attacks such as Force Push, Repulse, Force Valor, and all of his stats should roughly scale to this level as well. 
seeing as the force he channels is simply his life energy, which he would harness towards all of his abilities in combat, especially his Force Fury, which is basically his own version of Spartan Rage from God of War. In regards to his most famous feat of telekinetically moving the estimated to be around 40 million ton Star Destroyer as he does, it's actually far less impressive, yielding around 50 kilotons of TNT, or roughly a billion times less impressive than his feet in The Force Unleashed 2. For those wondering, while lifting or moving something's weight around is naturally less impressive than if you were to utterly annihilate said object, or in this case, split it in two, there is still some measure of kinetic energy exerted on the person moving the object, with factors such as the speed or severity at which it's being moved influencing the overall yield of said energy. So in this case, with Starkiller pulling and slamming down the destroyer, he'd be producing, again, much less energy compared to splitting it in two. However, we know that the Starkiller clone is actually stronger than the original version who performed this feat, with the original Galen Merrick growing ever stronger as he learned about his past in the first game, which the clone consistently does all throughout the Force Unleashed 2. He even fights a giant Rancor-eating monster known as the Gorog, which was stated in the Force Unleashed 2 novel to have enough power behind its strikes to crack a moon in two. Using our real moon, which might be a lowball as even the moon base of Yavin 4 as seen in Star Wars, is actually nearly as big as the planet Earth. Splitting these celestial bodies in half would yield at least 61 petatons, naturally far stronger than just cracking an imperial vessel in half. Starkiller was able to block and nullify a large portion of this energy behind his force barrier and eventually downed the beast. For those questioning why this one weird alien is just strong as f we literally only see it in this one game and its tie-in comic, and it just blatantly withstands multiple attacks from Starkiller and mandatory quick time events. The same guy who can empower guns to bust apart Star Destroyers with his force energy. So a lot of the time in fiction, there would just be weird fauna that can contend with the protags just out of convenience, which is the case here. While one may be inclined to go farther, scaling Starkiller to peak Darth Vader or Darth Sidious, there's actually enough context there to show that the Apprentice isn't actually within their tier of power. It's implied in the second The Force Unleashed novel that Vader wasn't aware of his pupil's power, that this underestimation costed him a victory in their first bout. He corrected this flaw by the time of the second game, wherein he was hopelessly outdueling and overpowering an enraged Galen at multiple points, only losing via exposure to Force Lightning. He actually tanks much of this 43 teraton lightning before ultimately succumbing to it, with Vader's life support being blatantly susceptible to electricity as stated throughout multiple sources. Sidious was, in fact, toying with Starkiller. While their fight appeared pitched at times, Sidious was demonstrably holding back as he point-blank tanks an attack described as containing all of Galen's power, walking away from it and their fight without a scratch to show. So, it's safe to scale Starkiller to teratons levels of power and leave it at that. I'm not really going to consider the non-canon versions of Starkiller, like how he's shown in the Force Unleashed 1 DLC or the bad ending of the Force Unleashed 2. The little that we know about Force Unleashed 3 would have followed up on the Force Unleashed 2's good ending, so even though it never got a follow-up, it is probable that it would have been the main good ending that would have been the canon one going forward anyway. And we really don't even know much about Starkiller's other clone, so yeah. Cal Kestis was never the child of prophecy, a Jedi destined for greatness, or even a standout among the other Padawans his age, but what defined him was being a survivor. After surviving the Jedi Purge known as Order 66, the young Cal Kestis went into hiding on Baraka, where he became a scrapper for many years, letting the life he lived and his force powers diminish and disappear into the past. That was until that past came crashing into his life in the form of the Inquisitorious. Cal was then thrust back into another war where he, alongside former Jedi Master Seer Junda, would take the fight to the Empire, resisting where they could and striking when able. 
Cal's limited training as a Padawan would slowly come back to him throughout his adventures and in his battles against the Jedi Hunters trained by Darth Vader himself, he would grow more and more confident as well as more powerful. With his new master, Cal would learn new force techniques and his abilities with a lightsaber would become more proficient. Eventually, Cal would release Dagon Gera from his back to stasis and he would be forced to battle the fallen Jedi. Dagon was a Jedi from the High Republic era when the Jedi were at their height just over 200 years prior to the Clone Wars. Even Yoda was at his most powerful during this era, not to mention the strongest Jedi to ever live, Porter Engel, was also alive at this time. Dagon is referred to as one of the Jedi Order's finest warriors, and by the time of their final duel, his power had returned to him completely. While I wouldn't say Dagon is the strongest Jedi of the High Republic, he'd likely still be behind the likes of Porter Angle, Yoda, Avar Chris, and Elzar Man. I'd say it's probably fair to say he's comparable to the tier of Jedi just below these four. One of the best examples of the Jedi within that range of power would be Loden Greatstorm. Loden is referred to as one of the greatest Jedi of the High Republic, which I'd consider to be a similar statement to that of Dagon's, who is one of the finest. Great Storm is able to deflect blaster fire from a starship, something that is incredibly difficult to do. Loden's most impressive feat is lifting a mountain, and while his Padawan Bell Zetafar was there to help, the gap in power between Loden and Bell was astronomical, and Bell's assistance would be a drop in the bucket of Loden's force ability. To compare this to the Jedi of the current era, Yoda was also able to stop the momentum of a living mountain, and Loden is able to accomplish feats that characters like Asajj Ventress could not. Asajj herself is no slouch, able to duel and even get the better of multiple Jedi Masters. To support Dagon and therefore Cal being at this level, Dagon was able to claim victory over Ravis, a Gendai so powerful that it took many other Jedi Knights to eventually subdue after Dagon's turn. Ravis claims that Cal is likely Dagon's equal, and Cal proves it by defeating Dagon in battle as well. As far as the clone's combat speed, the same could be said of Starkiller as pretty much any force user in the Legends universe. Through his force augmented agility, he reacts to and deflects many a blaster bolt, which are described in the lore as moving at the speed of light. With novels even explaining that the beams seen by audiences are actually just glowing pulses moving slower than the actual light beam, with the laser itself being practically invisible in most cases per their speed, moving at the speed of light. There are as well calculations based on Mace Windu's combat speed in the 2D Clone Wars series deflecting many droid-fired lasers, a feat Starkiller replicates left and right, landing again within the speed of light ranges, making this all very consistent. Even further than that, we have Anakin Skywalker reacting fast enough in hyperspace to halt the cruiser he was flying before it hit the planet he was flying towards. With Galen obviously tagging and reacting to Darth Vader across both of their fights, with Vader stated to have greater access to the Force than his Anakin self, multiple times over leading into the Force Unleashed. It's enough to say that Starkiller should have at least relative levels of reaction and combat speed as this at least 3,000 times the speed of light display. Even if he doesn't outright scale to peak Vader, their two fights and the fact that Starkiller didn't just get blitzed should be enough to say he's with within these ranges. As for speed, Cal boasts reaction speeds of massively faster than light. There are multiple characters in universe who are able to react to static objects while flying through hyperspace, and Cal would scale to this level of speed as well. In terms of his skills as a duelist, Starkiller stated to have practically perfected saber combat. His main two styles are Juyo and Suresu. The highly violent and dangerous Juyo actually requires high level masteries of most of the other forms to perform at all. Suresu being specifically designed for defense, opening one's senses to their utmost and allowing for the blocking of various projectiles and even close ranged weapons at once. If one had to prioritize only two forms, these are debatably the most optimal, with Juyo providing a strong and kinetic offense in tandem with Suresu's superb defensive qualities. Keep in mind too that Starkiller would be pretty much a master of both forms, and likely the rest as well per Juyo's requirements. And while I will say that his defeat of Vader in The Force Unleashed 2 was mostly circumstantial, Galen was actually losing the duel until he deferred to the closest thing to Vader's kryptonite, that being Force Lightning. 
The fact that he was able to keep up with such a tenured and elite combatant as Vader at all is a feat. With the Fallen Chosen One demonstrating the highest levels of aptitude with every lightsaber form, 18 whole years before his encounter with Starkiller, before Vader's continual training and ever-increasing improvements. Concerning skill, Cal is also incredibly impressive. As mentioned previously, he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dagon. Dagon is stated to bring the full skill of one of the Order's finest Jedi to bear. Again, the Jedi of the High Republic are exceptional, with the middle of the pack masters and knights being able to perform lightsaber feats unheard of during the Clone War. If we're again comparing Dagon to Master Greatstorm, Loden was legendary and an exceptional duelist. Cal displays his skill with the saber in his mastery of several stances. He can use a single saber like most other Jedi, but with his highly adaptable lightsaber, he can switch forms in an instant, completely changing the battle and turning the tide in his favor. He can fight with a double-bladed lightsaber, use two at once, equip a cross guard and overpower the opposition, or even use a blaster alongside a reverse blade grip to become a truly unpredictable opponent. I touched briefly on Galen's force-based abilities before, but to go further in depth, he of course has telekinesis, telepathy, force push, force choke, force repulse, force lightning, and force rage, as mentioned before. He also boasts two to menace, which is the ability used whenever you see someone absorb or deflect energy, such as blaster bolts or force lightning, at least in Legends, with Starkiller using it to both aforementioned ends. All of these powers should be capable of outputting or absorbing energies within the ranges of his at least teraton levels of power, as force users employ abilities such as Force Valor to channel their energy throughout their physical body or other powers. While certain Jedi do specialize in abilities and develop more more lopsided strengths as far as their powers are concerned, they should all generally scale to one another. Basically, Galen would be able to force push someone with the same amount of kinetic energy as he can produce with his telekinetic slams and absorb or diffuse roughly the same levels of power with his two to menace. Finally, Cal's force abilities have become quite impressive as well. Of course, he has precognition and telekinesis as every Jedi does, pushes, pulls, lifts, drops, etc. He can also crush objects with the Force, Jedi mind trick, even the most stalwart minds, including purge troopers who are specifically trained to battle Jedi. Not only this, Cal could resist and turn Dagon's mind manipulation against him, which is stated to be able to dominate the strongest minds in the galaxy. But Cal's signature Force abilities are Force Stasis, which allows him to slow the movements of his opponents or even halt them entirely, preventing them from moving as well as psychometry, which allows him to read echoes of the past through the Force, gaining insight after touching an item of significance. Lastly, Cal can tap into the dark side at any time to gain a massive boost to his power level, allowing him to run through the most deadly agents of the Empire without a second. With all of their feats and prowess explained, who would win between the Jedi Survivor and the Secret Apprentice? As expected, despite growing leaps and bounds above where he was in Fallen Order and performing feats visually reminiscent of Star Killers, once raw numbers get involved, it becomes very much in favor of Galen Merrick. Even if we were to say that lifting a mountain yields the same amount of energy it would take to destroy it, when in all reality the act of lifting an object only accounts for a small fraction compared to utterly annihilating it, Starkiller directly and consistently performs feats 7,000 times more impressive than that of Loden Greatstorm lifting a mountain and Cal scaling to that. As for speed, they'd each be in a similar tier, scaling to those who can react to stationary objects in the galaxy crossing speeds of hyper space, and being able to react to or skill to those who deflect lasers and so on. While Cal does offer more versatility as far as his saber types and configurations are concerned, the Clone Force wielder should have the greater aptitude with a blade, given his feats of somewhat contending with arguably the most skilled duelist of all time in the Legends universe, someone bearing the description of the highest echelon of combatants, that being the ability to fluidly switch between forms at all times. With Starkiller even boasting blatant mastery of up to six of the seven lightsaber forms based on Juyo's Legends description. If the two were to clash in the realm of raw force abilities, ignoring Starkiller's massive advantage in terms of outright attack potency, Calcestis does showcase a few esoteric powers that Starkiller may have trouble dealing with.
with, such as Force Stasis and Cal's mental abilities. While having answers in the Legends timeline, Starkiller himself hasn't shown any blatant resistances to them. That being said, it's highly unlikely that Cal's stasis would even work on Galen, given again the 7,000 times difference in their power in Starkiller's favor. It's sort of like, do you really think someone could hold another person in place if they're just thousands of times stronger than them? N not likely. With the former Padawan no longer surviving against attacks, such as the clones, force repulses, slams, crushes, or he would be brutally overpowered by the apprentice's devastating force channeled through saber combat. So when everything is said and done, Starkiller still reigns as the champion of Star Wars video game protagonists, at least considering Cal Kestis. Thanks as always for Kiyushu Skerek helping me out and providing the Star Wars canon and Cal Kestis scaling specifically. And of course, thanks everyone for watching. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 40k soon. It would be a big landmark, so I would really like it if you guys could subscribe. There is a lot more content like this on the way, so thank you again.